Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong and welcome to the third part in our series of interviews with Dr. Vittorio Sebastiano of Stanford University. Dr. Sebastiano explained the concepts behind ERA, epigenetic reprogramming of aging in part one and the difference between generating induced pluripotent stem cells and ERA in part two. In this video, Dr. Sebastiano will reveal how ERA uses mRNA to synthesize the proteins needed to drive the rejuvenation process. Let me provide a quick overview of messenger RNA's role in building proteins in the cell. mRNA, or messenger ribonucleic acid, is generated in the nucleus, where it reads the DNA to find the sequence of amino acids required to generate proteins in the cell. This process is called transcription. The mRNA is then exported from the nucleus into the main body of the cell. Here it works with a structure called a ribosome to build the protein as specified in the DNA. As we shall see, the ERA technology utilizes the second step in its process to build the proteins it requires. And with that, let me start the interview. How does the technology within the cell that you're using, so I believe you're using messenger RNA, um, but like other people who have been doing uh, Reprogramming really have been using, I think, viruses to inject the DNA into this into the nucleus. And so, yep. can you talk a little bit about how 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 does the messenger RNA work in terms of um, reprogramming the epigenetics? Yeah. Well, I I, uh, I think that you know the the mRNA technology or the RNA technology uh, has a lot of advantages over other types of technologies that you know deliver. The, the reprogramming factors. Um, regardless of the technology that we, we pick and use, uh, viral vectors, uh, DNA-based vectors, uh, or RNA vector, or RNA-based uh, uh, technology, uh, what, what, what we are trying to achieve is basically to, to express a specific set of transcription factors in the cells. And these transcription factors, the, the famous Yamanaka factors, if we, if we want to call them, uh, it's actually more than that, you know. It's, we we have a, we are using a cocktail which is the original Yamanaka plus two two others, um, but uh, those those transcription factors are embryonic genes or genes that have been somehow involved with embryonic development. And so what what they do is that they start recruiting other factors which are already ex already in the cells, or maybe they promote uh, the expression of other factors that are not expressed in the cells. But by doing so, basically slowly and gradually, they reprogram the epigenetic, uh, you know, machinery and the epigenetic landscape of the of the cells. So what what we and by we I mean you know ourselves, but also many other scientists in the in the world. What we are doing is really to exogenously express these factors in the cells. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, what is the best way to do so? Uh, and I, I firmly believe that actually the mRNA-based technology is by far the most uh, efficient, the fastest, uh, and the, the safest uh, approach for a very simple reason. Because the mRNAs are molecules that cannot integrate into the genome. So um, I don't know if, if I should if I should explain this better, but uh, the the basically the, the way a cell the way a, the way a cell works is that it has the DNA right, and it makes a copy of this information by making an mRNA molecule. The mRNA goes you know uh, makes the protein, and so you know it codifies basically for for a specific function. What we are doing is we are bypassing this, uh, you know, uh, translation step uh, of the DNA into the mRNA. We are providing the mRNA to the cells. So the only thing that the cells has to has have to do is to translate that mRNA into a protein, so that the protein then can, you know, make it, you know its uh, its job. Uh, now the mRNA, since it has this uh, messenger, you know, function. DNA to protein, okay, cannot go into the nucleus and cannot integrate into the genome. What does that mean? It, basic, it basically means that it's not changing the genetic landscape of the cells, but it is changing only the epigenetic landscape of the cells because it's, it's actually um, um, 
coding for the, for, for, the, for the formation of this protein that then goes into the nucleus and changes the epigenome of the, of the cells in very simple words, in very simple terms. Uh, and, and this is very important because all the other technologies available or most of the other technologies available, again, to deliver these factors are based on viral vectors or are based on DNA vectors, which uh, have the propensity to, int because they are DNA-based uh, molecules, they have the propensity to integrate into the, the cells. And when they do so, they integrate you know, very randomly in the genome. And so they can actually uh, you know, cause, it's called insertional mutagenesis. It means that they change the genome and they could actually integrate in genes which are proto-oncogenes, for example. And they could, you could, you could actually get get cancer out of that, you know, insertion uh, in, in event. So we, we believe that actually the mRNA technology is by far the safest because again there is no possibility at all to to integrate into into the, the, the DNA of the of the cells, and it also has a lot of practical uh, you know um, advantages. For example, you can change the sequence very rapidly. Uh, you can actually make uh, the, the mRNA more stable, less stable, and so you can control the expression in time. Uh, the downside of this is that uh, the technology uh, is, uh, is not being developed as of yet. You know, there is, no, there is not much known about how to deliver in vivo the mRNA in a very specific way and in a very efficient way. So that's kind of the bottleneck. Uh, but just look at what's happening with the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, the mRNA-based, for example, uh, um, uh, vaccines are now being delivered you know, for the first time. And so there is a lot of know-how that has been developed on how to deliver efficiently mRNA into the cells, different types of cells in the body, very efficiently. So I think it's just a matter of time and we will, we will soon find out a, you know, a very efficient way to deliver the mRNAs. At that point, I think, you know, the, the, that te our technology is going to be really ready for translational applications, and that's exactly where you know the, the work of the, the of the coming years will will be focused on. <clears throat> right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, that makes it uh, clearer. Um, so I I think you partly answered this. So so you say that um, you know you've got to take the cell to the point of no return, but no be, no no further, and so there's a certain time that you're aiming for. So how do you control that time? Is it just, it's the stability of the message uh, of the mRNA? You can control that in, in multiple ways. One way is uh, to control the stability of the mRNA, yes. Uh, another way is basically by, um, by pulsing the cells, uh, for example, for you know, every day for, for a certain number of days or every other day for a certain number of days. Uh, you, you, can, you can actually you know, tune that because once in the cells, the mRNA has a stability of about 16 to 20 hours. So if you can successfully deliver the mRNA once, you know that this, the proteins are going to be, or you know, the, yeah, the proteins, the factors that you are expressing are going to be around for about 20 hours. So if you don't give more to the cells, the cells, you know, naturally kind of, you know, uh, they translate, so they make the proteins of those factors, but then they stop because there's no mRNA, you know, left. Uh, and so you can control the duration, for example, by pulsing continuously the cells, you know, every day, every other day, every three, day, three days, whatever, whatever the cell types uh, require. Um, and uh, you can, but you can also work on the chemical properties of the, of, the, of the mRNA. And so, you know, there is, on the sequence of the mRNA, there's ways actually to make it long, last much longer. You can also add some sequences that can be targeted specifically. So if you really need to shut it off, you can also add some specific targets that then you can, then you can, you can use actually to degrade actively the mRNA. So there's very many, many, many different ways actually to control that, that window of time. Again, of course, you know, this is much simpler in vitro, you know, in the, in the, in the lab, because, you know, you, you have all those variables can be very, very easily controlled. Uh, in vivo is the challenge, but that's exactly what we're gonna do in the future. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. In part four of the interview series, we will move the discussion from the cellular level to that of the human tissue, where Dr. Sebastiano will discuss how to apply the technology at a larger scale so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. 
Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.